What's up, everybody? Uh, figured I'd show a trade I'm in today. Took live in the room. Let's get in there and see. It's the pound yen long. So here's our daily chart. You see from the big picture, we had some very high volume off a low price and a sign of strength. But of course, that is the daily. We want to get in there and, and see on the uh, smaller time frames what's going on there. But this is where we are. A little bounce off high volume and a retracement to a fib of this low to high. Let's get in there and see. As I say, I like to see the one hour really confirm my background. Uh, and there it is. So we have our high volume sign of strength, climactic volume after a downtrend there. Bullish going forward after that day, right? Uh, so we we're able to move up pretty well. Not a lot of weakness showing up, really. Um, finally, a bit there. And we get a retracement. And I'm looking to get in long still with this very high volume in the background if we get the reaccumulation phase here, right, in the FIB area where it typically can occur. Um, so let's get in there yesterday, first of all, and see how excited those buyers are were when we got there. And there's the first touch of 50 FIB. There's the sign of strength. There's the lower prices into the FIB area, high volume sustaining. Then we get a double bottom pattern, and obviously, again, the sign of strength. So we can see the buying in this area. And the day kind of just ended off with that. I didn't take a trade that day or anything yesterday on that. Um, continuing forward, we did overshoot the uh, 50 EMA. I mean, the uh, 618 FIB, if we go to the one hour, that's this. And if we end up, if we ever do that, uh, you often hear me say overshoot of 618. As long as we come back, it would be nice to have higher volume as sign of strength here, but we do have strength, strength, and a healthy trend, and it's just a retracement. We're looking for this to come back. So um, looking for that to get above the 618 to confirm that you want to buy going forward. So that did have to happen. Uh, you've heard me talk about that slight overshoot, but you need to get back, and we're, we're still valid here. Now, today. Um, the news brought it down. When was the news on oh, the news was there down? So here is today's range and the fib that I had drawn there, the low to high today, fib area pops up here. And of course that's an area to look for hopefully a sign of strength and a way to get in long, uh, with the background. Um, so here is the touch of the fib area on this candle, right? And there's the volume. Now, something to note here is a good little piece of information. This is not your typical sign of strength, right? What is a sign of strength? Typically, it's defined as a bearish candle, a down candle, right? Closing off the low, but being red, right? Closing off the low on high volume and then a, a re bullish reaction. In this case, it's a green candle. But the point is the price area that it tested. Um, and that's the key area. Of course, we know this if you watch my videos. One of the most popular places I would look for a trade. And basically, if buyers are looking to get in, they are likely to show up here. If not, maybe would have went lower and found them there. So we're looking for the buyers to come in and start off the entry. Um, and the one-minute chart reveals what's going on. So I'm not taking signals off a of one-minute chart. And really, again, we're just looking at the same thing in more detail. And the one-minute shows shows that. So why do we say a sign of strength is typically a down candle? Because it's the low prices that the high volume needs to come in on. So typically it will be. So there is a one-minute chart showing us, ah, okay. And when I saw this, on a one minute chart, I knew that the, so look at this price area. It's right into that FIB area. That's where the high volume occurred and the bounce. Now, if we go to the five minute, then we can look at this five minute candle and know that the high activity is not this price area, this price, area, it's right there, right where we want to see it. So those buyers jumped on it and it was all pre-planned. They're going to start buying it up right there. And we had the level marked, of course. So we know that the activity is off of this area, right? That's what I wanted to show you. So may not be a typical sign of strength by definition here, but it certainly matches, you know, the proper uh, demand coming in at lower prices the way it needs to be and right into our area. So going forward, 14 EMA, and we get a test. Now, initially, this high volume here, so I figured, okay, we might be waiting. Maybe we'll come down again and have to see more buying in there. 
But the test here of the 14, it quickly fizzled out, and there was really no follow-through on that, and quickly turned into a low-volume test, which, of course, is what you want after that. Um, now, as this what time went by here, this showed up as the automatic rally, obviously, right? Uh, going forward, and that's your first level of resistance after strength. So that's your automatic rally. That gives an entry if we push through. Now, of course, a no supply would have been valid, but there is not one here. So there is a push through here. Now, it, it closed properly. It's not a sign of weakness. Um, so that is an entry confirmed. So once this candle opened, uh, then I, I got into the trade. So it was right in here uh, because I needed to see this close. One of the reasons why I really want to wait for this to close is because there wasn't a no supply. So if I don't get a proper no supply by definition, I can still take the push through the automatic rally. But I need to make sure that it closes right because, again, you can get in, right? But then you get high volume rejection and you come back down as a sign of weakness. So to wait for it to close, uh, you make sure that's not there. Uh, so that was the entry into this candle is where I entered. Now, it looks like it didn't move that much, but that was about a 30 pip move. I already put some profit in the bank, stop a break even. But what's nice about this is um, in the larger picture, it may or may, or may not happen, but where do we want to look? Maybe the four hour. Now on targets, I'll look at the bigger picture and say, okay, what is realistic? Sometimes it's big, sometimes it's not. The larger projection of this, I mean, this is a four hour, and we could say that uh, to get the view. But you look at it on the daily, right? You get the strength, the retracement, and the fractally, uh, uh, symmetrically, maybe the similar size move it could be the ultimate target. Uh, now, if you look at where that is, it ends up right at resistance. And it's nice when things snap together. But as I say, it's not all or nothing. That is a final target if things are moving along well. But basically, we have this area, which we just barely hit. And I put some in the bank here. No more risk on the trade. So we're looking at 618, the previous resistance. And ultimately here, this is like a few hundred pips away. It doesn't have to get there. But it's nice that the chart suggested, and if I hold, you know, a third of my position, a quarter of my position, um, you know, it's over 300 pips, so it'd be a nice payoff either way. Uh, but it doesn't need to do that. There's plenty of good targets in here. That'll, that'll be just fine. Um, but again, it's a matter of mapping them out, FIB, resistance, uh, confluence areas that may show up, and seeing how price reacts there. Uh, so that's it. Not much else to say there. Um, eh, what else could I tell you? What's up, guys? Been a while. I haven't made a video in a while. <laughs> Doing my thing. Um, you're a dollar. We could look at that. And what's happening here is, you know, there was weakness, nice downtrend. We started to hit some demand, stop the progress of the downtrend, more demand. Now, today on news, it did a fake breakout. More demand showing up. It's not exactly climactic, but it's starting to build up long positions over time. I'm going to give us a little time, and maybe tomorrow, if everything's still intact and we're seeing accumulation type of activity, this box is not technically covering a perfect area. It, I was just highlighting all the pin rejections on increased volume through this area, and that's showing us the accumulation activity. And then here, now on news, on a fake breakout spring. So it's accumulation. Um, but I'm not rushing it. It's counter trend and the volume is not exactly climactic. So maybe going forward, more evidence of accumulation through here should get us, you know, at least, you know, back to that top, maybe by tomorrow. And, you know, it's a test for sellers. If they don't show up, maybe we do a fib retracement and so on. If they do show up, <clears throat> we can end up ranging, but very likely we get to the high here if we get into tomorrow and we're seeing continuous accumulation activity here all right guys uh, maybe that helps you with some things um of course you could always join the live so let me switch over and have the remind you of the website so of course you could join the live sessions i do a tuesday wednesday thursday if you're new to my stuff here um it's myfxsource.com and uh if you scroll down here's the subscription to the live training sessions, the weekly classes every Tuesday, and then a um, 
sorry, the weekly classes every Tuesday. And then there's an offer for both if you want that. Also, there's a video course available, and that really covers the entire method over 12 hours. It's, it's actually longer than that. Um, you got to sample the video there. And that, if you're interested in learning the entire method in a more organized way than the, than the YouTube videos, you know, this is really organized and detailed. Uh, it covers everything. So you have that option too, if you're interested. Anyway, you can check that stuff out. All right, guys. But meanwhile, plenty of videos on my YouTube channel, and that's all free. So get on it. Learn how to trade. All right, guys.